Okay, so in today's video, I want to take a look at the Milescraft Universal Track Saw Guide to firstly determine if it's a good usable product and secondly, how it compares or if it's at all comparable to, let's call it, more expensive track saw setups. So a couple of weeks ago, I attended a woodworking expo hosted by a hardware center. And while I was there, I got to chatting with the organizers about this product and how it compares to, for example, the TS-55 by Festool. They agreed to send this one over so I can draw my own conclusions. But before I get dug in, I need to ask the question, who's this product for? Who's going to get value out of it? Who's going to go out to look to buy this product? So if you had to go out and you had to go buy this track and you go buy a brand new circular saw to use with it, Depending on what saw you go for, the odds are you're going to get away quite a bit cheaper than you would if you had to go for, for example, the face tool. But I don't think that's what they had in mind with this product. I may be wrong, but I think they are looking at giving people that already own a circular saw the opportunity to upgrade to a track saw instead of having to buy another saw just so they can use it with whatever track is compatible with that saw. So that's going to be my approach with this review to determine whether this product will fill that void. I'm going to check what's in the box, the quality of the product, the setup required before doing a few practical tests. This will hopefully allow me to draw conclusions and determine whether this is a reasonable answer for somebody that already owns a circular saw or whether you are better off chucking your circular saw and rather upgrading to let's call it a purpose built track and saw assembly or setup. Now before I get started, I am going to be adding links to this product in the description of this video for the local guys to Hardware Center and for the international guys to Amazon so you can check pricing and availability for yourself and see how it compares to other products on the market. Finally, a big thank you to Hardware Center for giving us the opportunity to take a look at the Milescraft Universal Track Saw Guide. Alright, so as I said, I'm going to get started with what is in the box and when you open the box, the first thing you are going to see is the user manual. You will then also find the saw base that you will be attaching the circular saw to to allow it to function with the track or with the track setup. There is then a packet of smalls and in this packet you will find two rail connectors and a hex key. You will also find four glide adjusters for setting up the track saw base or the saw base, four vertical clamp spacers, the saw blade spacer and two clamps for securing the track. Also in the box is two pieces of 700mm or 27.5 inch aluminium tracks. Okay, so out of the box, first impressions. Well, I quite like the color scheme, but that does nothing for usability or functionality. Everything also seems to be quite well made, mostly aluminum, not a lot of plastic, but we will see about deflection, slipping and tolerances, stuff like that when we get to using it. You will also notice that the track comes in two 700 mil or 27.5 inch pieces that is made to join together using the rail connectors. Now if you want to further extend your track, additional track pieces can be purchased. They come in sets of two like that and they include two sets of rail connectors. I think they did it like this to make the assembly or the setup more compact during storage and transportation, but we will see in a moment if they are sacrificing stability at the joint and how well the guide actually moves over that joint during use. Now I can appreciate the effort in making the unit more compact by splitting the rail up into two parts, but I also think it created a bit of a missed opportunity for Milescraft because now everything can fit in a box this size. I think if they made the product a little bit more expensive and added an inexpensive material or canvas carry case, it would have added a great deal of value. Yes, it won't remove anything from the functionality or usability of the product, but as I said, maybe just a bit of a missed opportunity. Now something I like to check in pretty much all my reviews is the quality of the user manual because I think it's sometimes overlooked. It's a very simple thing that can be added to any product and adds a great deal of value, especially with a product like this where a degree of setup and care is required. This is an area, in my opinion, where Milescraft has always done quite well. Their instructions are clear and to the point and the illustrations do a great job at showing the setup and use of the saw. So I think the operator shouldn't have any issues following this instruction manual. Okay, so next up, the rail. Obviously aluminium and with all these profiles added into it, it feels quite solid, especially when it is placed on a flat surface. 
At the working edge over here you will find the guide strip which doubles as the anti-slip pads on the underside and they do a fairly decent job at keeping the rail secured during use. Something else worth mentioning is the plastic end caps. These obviously get removed if you want to join the rails together. And the purpose of these caps is to protect the edge from deformation if it ever gets bumped up against something, or if you are using a corded circular saw to prevent the cord from getting hooked on the edge of the aluminum profile. These end caps are a pretty cool idea in terms of functionality and protection for the rail when they are installed on the rail. When they aren't, I feel like they are a bit flimsy and can easily break or even be lost. So care would need to be taken when these are not being used. And this is once again where that carry case would have been quite useful because it would have given you a place to store these when they aren't being used. To join the two track pieces together, the rail connectors simply slide into place and tighten using the hex key. Here I'm being careful not to over tighten the grub screws because I don't want to damage or deform the aluminium. I am using a straight edge just to ensure that the two track pieces are aligned when I join them together but it doesn't look like it's necessary. The moment I move the two track pieces together it looks like they are nice and straight. As for the rail joining it's Fast and easy enough, it seems straight and pretty solid. Okay, so next up is the sled or the saw base that the circular saw will be attaching to. Now, with the setup, you will notice there's no anti friction pads on the rail itself. Instead, it's installed on the underside of the saw base. Now it looks like it's quite effective in gliding and the joint seems to have almost no effect on it at all. But at this stage there is quite a bit of play on the saw base which needs to be removed using the glide adjusters. Now guys, in the manual, the guide adjusters are mentioned as an optional addition to increase stability. But if we look at this play over here, I feel like it is a necessity. And to set it, the saw base needs to be pushed up against towards the cutting side. And this needs to be adjusted up against that surface over here, which provides the stability required. Now I have a little bit of an issue with this setup because how am I supposed to securely hold the guide adjuster at the bottom in a way that would allow me to tighten the screw. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to push up against the screwdriver with my finger over here so that the, the guide adjuster gets pushed up against the surface and hopefully I can, can tighten it like that and it seems to be working. Okay, so that was a little bit tricky, but now that the guide adjusters are installed, the saw base is a lot more stable and I can get to installing the saw. Right, so now because I don't have a circular saw to do a practical or functional test on the universal track saw guide, the guys over at Hardware Center and Crest Tool South Africa sent me this machine. I recently had the opportunity to check out the Crest product line and chat with their local representative. There seems to be some really nice stuff there and very competitively priced, so definitely worth a look. I'll put all the relevant links down below, but you can also get in contact with the guys at Hardware Center who can give you more information on the Crest product line. 
Okay, so next I want to check the process of installing the saw onto the saw base and I'll square the blade is once it's done. Then I want to do a few test cuts and check the sequence or the process of removing the saw if I want to use it somewhere else and placing it back onto the saw base. Would I need to repeat the entire sequence or setup sequence or is it a matter of putting the saw down and clamping it in? Setting up the saw on the saw base is a process that starts with the saw blade spacer. Very important component so don't lose it because you're probably not going to be able to set the saw up without it. Because not all circular saws have the same footprint, this is to ensure that the blade orientation is the same on all circular saws once they're installed onto the base. When installing the saw onto the base, the blade needs to be flush with the saw blade spacer. Also, this is a step or operation that relies on three separate components. Firstly, the saw blade spacer that ensures that the blade is spaced correctly, but also that it is running parallel with the base. Then the saw end stops cradle the saw along its length, while the hold down clamps secure the saw and prevents it from moving around. Okay, so now I have everything set up and ready to start cutting. I've got the saw secured on the base and the process was fairly straightforward. It also feels quite solid. I doubt the saw will be able to move around during cutting. Then to secure the track to the workpiece, a set of clamps are included. Which is a nice addition considering most other setups require you to purchase clamps separately. I also noticed that the manual instructs you to use these clamps with every single cut, instead of relying solely on the friction grip strips. Now for the first cut you'll notice that the blade sits on top of the guide strip, and that's because the guide strip needs to be calibrated. To do this I'm going to clamp the track to a piece of sacrificial wood and use the saw to cut the guide strip down to size. This way the guide strip will always sit right up against the blade. Now it doesn't mention this anywhere in the manual or if it does I probably missed it but the guide strip will also do a great job or hopefully do a great job at preventing tear out because it's applying pressure on the stock right next to the blade. Okay, so I'm all set up and ready to start cutting. As I said, the first cut is to calibrate the guide strip so I need to run the saw along the entire length of the track, feeding it in at the start and feeding it out at the end. Now if I ever change saws or even if I just change the blade, I'll probably have to replace the cut guide and recalibrate it. Right, so now the cut guide is calibrated because it is trimmed down to sit exactly where the saw blade runs. This means that when I make future cuts I would mark my panel or stock and align the cut guide with that marked line before clamping it down. The saw will then trace the cut line.
So on the accuracy front, I would definitely call that a pass. So next I want to check the process of taking the saw off the base and installing it back onto it for when I want to use the saw for whatever other reason. This should be fairly straightforward because I don't have to readjust the saw in stops. Instead I can loosen the clamps and take the saw out. And when I want to put it back in, I first use the saw blade spacer and secure the clamps once again. The reason I'm checking this is I want to see how well the saw blade aligns with the now calibrated cut guide once the saw has been removed from the base and reinstalled. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to check on the Mouthcraft Universal Track Saw Guide and I'm ready to give you my opinion or conclusion on the product, starting with the quality. Overall the quality is good and gets the thumbs up from me. It's made from solid material and there's not a crazy amount of plastic. It's flush where it needs to be flush and it aligns well where it needs to align well. There isn't really any specific component I would be able to identify as a potential weak point or that is at the risk of critical failure. The only fragile component I'd say is the rail end stop. Something I did notice however is possible limitations on the saw base. When I tried to drop my saw all the way the battery clashes with this stud over here. This removes about 3 to 5 mil of my maximum cutting depth, which is not really a big deal for me and if it was I could always just trim the stud down or swap out the saw for a corded saw which will likely not have the same issue. But as I said at this stage, not really a big problem and it doesn't really affect the operation of the track too much either. So that's it for quality. As I said, overall a thumbs up from me. Next is usability and you guys saw the video or in the video, the rail joining, the calibrating of the guide strip, putting the saw on the base, removing the saw and making cuts all fairly straightforward. And if I ever doubted anything, I had the user manual, which is very descriptive and you know, there wasn't really any issues in that area. And then finally, how does it compare to, for example, the Festool, which is the only one I can really compare it to because it's the only one I've got personal experience with. Well, they're both made from similar materials, they're both quite accurate, and they both do a great job at guiding a saw to make a straight cut. With the Festool, you have the advantage of simplicity and speed. It's just a track and a saw, so you put your saw down and you make your cut. With the Milescraft, there's a few more components to keep track of, and there's a degree of setup required, like installing the saw onto the saw base. With the Milescraft setup you also obviously don't have a depth gauge that takes the thickness of the track into account and you don't have the plunge feature. So the track needs to extend beyond your stock so that the saw can be set to its depth and then fed into the stock. Taking all of this into consideration and getting back to my original question, is this a reasonable option for somebody looking to upgrade to a track saw setup? And in my opinion, it absolutely is, especially for the DIYers, hobbyists and weekend woodworkers, because it produces a similar, if not the same quality cut, but at a fraction of the price. But that's pretty much my review of this product. I don't know if I forgot anything or if you guys want to add anything, please do so in the comment section down below. Overall, I like the product. I think it does what it's supposed to do. And I don't think there's many negatives or there aren't many negatives that I can point out on this product. Yes, you sacrifice some features, but at the end of the day, you need to ask yourself the question, is or do these features justify the additional cost on the competing product? Once you ask this question, for some people it will, for some people it won't, but you'll be able to make your decision. For me, this is a really good option for people wanting to upgrade to a track source setup. And that's pretty much it for this video. Once again, a big thank you to Hardware Center and Crest Tool South Africa for this kit so that we can take a look at it and so that I could make this video for you guys. Hopefully it added some value. Then guys, remember my chemical storage unit and my ultimate tool storage unit for small workshops. The plans are now live on my plans website for everybody that's been asking. I will link it down below, so check it out there. 
Then guys, I will be back really soon with some more projects to make the most of my small single garage workshop. So if you aren't subscribed, then you should do that now so you don't miss out. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got some value out of it. Until next time, cheers.